Hey everyone, I am Trucker Ray and welcome to my channel. If you're viewing for the first time, I share my experiences driving the highways of North America and I love to share the gospel of Yeshua, Jesus Christ our Lord. And if you've been here before, welcome back everyone. I am currently in Denver right now. I did a delivery yesterday and um, I just wanted to have some time away from doing all the recording and taking it easy. But uh, they're sending me from here empty to Phoenix and that means I get to go over the Colorado Rockies on Interstate 70 and that's something I did not want to miss out on showing you guys if you've never seen it before because it is the first time I'll be heading over that interstate over the Rockies so I thought how exciting would that be to share that with you and it's been hot today it is ridiculously hot today um, yes or t earlier today was a hundred It was extraordinarily hot. Um, and right now, I don't know what the temperatures are. But um, it's kind of nice to be moving because I've been sitting here since yesterday. <clears throat> so. And I just gave up a free spot and I just, one guy there was just crawling in the yard. He was like, I went up to him. I said, you looking for a place to park? He goes, yeah, there's nowhere to park in this area. I went, well, I'm pulling out two minutes, you can have it. He was very, very excited about that. So, <laughs> I love doing that. There is nowhere to park in this area. Denver is a terrible place to park. Uh, the truck stop in Aurora, the Flying J, is a nightmare to get in and out of there. And there's always a fender bender, there's always an accident in there. Uh, tow trucks running around towing people that have dropped their trailers for five minutes while they run over to the Walmart there. Yeah, it's not good. This is not a good place to get, and it's, and they're running me empty down to Phoenix for a reason, because there's just no loads out here. There's lots of freight coming in, but there's nothing leaving this area. And that explains why the TA is jam-packed, this place jam-packed, the one in Aurora is jam-packed, simply because there's drivers waiting to get loads out of here. So, we're just happy to be moving now. I was not wanting to sit for another day because if I sat here for the rest of the night, I just had a feeling that I was going to be here a lot longer than that, maybe even most of the day tomorrow. So, uh, I'm very, very happy that they got me moving. So, for those that made that decision, I don't know who it was, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, it's just nice. The air conditioning on the APU is good, but not like the one in the truck. So being able to use the truck while I'm driving, it's, it's nice. I've already cooled down significantly. Yeah, this is probably the hottest I've, I've felt it in since, since uh, the summer started. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Hot, 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 hot. So, again, we're heading over the uh, Colorado Rockies, which is really exciting. I've never done that before and like I said before I wanted to share that with you so again welcome 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 if you're here for the first time I hope you enjoy what you see
Good morning, everyone. We are uh, just making our way up the I-70 here towards the Utah border. Uh, stayed <coughs> in a uh, little AM Best there, just outside of Loma. Just on the, I guess maybe it was Loma, I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I tried to stop at a Flying J and a Lubs, but we all know how that works out at late hours of the night. You never get into those places, unless you're in the middle of nowhere. But uh, driving through the Rockies last night was very nice, wasn't it? It was, uh, it's too bad the sun was right in front of me. It kind of glare, created a glare on a lot of the, on the, um, on the approach to the some of the nice mountain areas but oh well it is what it is it was still kind of neat to go through there it's amazing though that highway highway 70 that goes through that area that really reminds me of the Cocala highway the steep grades and everything the only difference from that area um, because of the amount of ski areas in that in that area there ski lodges and uh, resorts there's a lot more people broken down on the side of that interstate trucks on the side that look like their brakes are ready to go up I seen a few trucks that they were smoking like crazy RVs that looked like they were torched uh, a day before obviously from overheating climbing those hills just uh, uh, obviously a uh, more of a population more vehicles broken down tow trucks everywhere uh, grabbing vehicles that were broken down trying to climb those hills yeah it kind of reminded me of the Kogala summit a little bit but just a lot more of it so this is all new territory for me I really don't know uh, what to expect through here I know that there's some beautiful areas that you can drive through um, in in Utah on the way to say Flagstaff, um, I will be turning off in about 60 miles on the 191. I really don't know what to expect for um, for the view. I don't expect to. I don't really don't know what the scenery is going to be like. So this is going to be a new thing for both you and me. So I hope you enjoy it.
This is some beautiful countryside out here. I do believe we're now entering in the Navajo Indian Reservation. This is what we're making our way here. Yeah, Navajo Nation. It's just, I, you know what? There was one time where I thought I came through here and no, I have never been up this road before, this highway. Because there was one thing that I seen way back when, <laughs> two hours ago, um, there was a, a big monument on the side of the road called Hole in the Rock. And I thought, oh, I've been through here before because if you, I can't remember, recall exactly where it is, but there's another one of those not too far from a major dam. That's, uh, I'm trying to remember if that's the one that's just, it's not the one out, oh, maybe it's the one that, if you leave Salt Lake City and you're making your way to Flagstaff, if you go that way, there's another one like that. There's a dam there, and then there's a, a hole in the rock. Tourist attraction. That's the word I'm trying to spit out. And, um, yeah, that's, I thought, oh, I've been through here. But no, I have not. I would have remembered a lot of this scenery. And it's beautiful scenery out here. It really is. We're still in Utah, by the way. We have not made our way into um, into Arizona yet.
my friends, this is the exit I am looking for. My day will be over soon. We've made it into Tonofa where, Tonofa, Arizona, where I'm also loading out here. But there doesn't seem to be a whole lot around here, so I'm wondering where I'm loading. I haven't even looked up the address yet. But this is where we will be turning off. I mean, everything is pretty well desert area around here. I'm really curious where I'm loading. <laughs> yeah, and there should be uh, there should be some decent parking at this pilot. Really? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, wow. I wonder if I can squeeze in through here. I wonder if I can squeeze in through here. Here we are. Okay. Yeah, there's some spots available I can see. Spots over there. A couple spots in front here. Uh, that guy's backing in there. I think there's a spot right there. Oh, these are reserved spots. Oh my word, the, late, the girl said there was no reserved spots at this location. Okay, I guess she was not correct on that one. Maybe she doesn't even realize what she has here. <laughs> That's okay, it doesn't matter. This is a big enough lot. I'm sure I'll find a decent spot to park. There's a big dirt lot over there too. Do, 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 do. So, what are we picking up? We are picking up tomorrow, we will be picking up uh, watermelon. And it's going to Regina. Watermelon going to Regina. That is what's going on. You know what? There's some spots right here. I'll just grab one of these. This will work for me. Yeah. All right, friends. I am just gonna relax here and then we'll catch up with you guys in the AM. All right, my friends, it's time for another edition of Mailbag. So let's dig deep into the bag and see what we got. Whee! This letter is from Roger. He writes, hi, Ray, that East Coast trip was one to try your patience. How do you keep sane on a trip like that? Your solution for the bread was just brilliant. Do you lose money when trips go wrong like that as you must get so frustrated to spend so much time waiting around through no fault of your own? And I will stop there for a minute. Uh, Roger, yeah, you do lose money because when you're only driving three, four hours a day, when you're normally used to driving 11, that's like maybe 150, 200 miles a day, and it takes you, say, four days to do 1,200 miles when you could do that in two days. Uh, yeah, you do lose quite a bit of money, but you know what? Sometimes those loads have to get done. It's a sacrifice you have to make. All right, let's continue. Uh, he continues to say, I often wonder how you cope with all the time zones in Canada and the US and how you must have uh, to be constantly working out rest and delivery times along with the awkward times of loading and delivering uh, delivering 24 seven. It is very, very draining. Sometimes it takes uh, several days afterwards after one of those East Coast trips just to get back on track with your normal sleeping schedule. It does take a lot out of you. 
Uh, you say seeing the New York seeing New York was a real treat, but I was surprised how quiet the roads were. <laughs> you and me both, my friend. Thanks again for a great trip, and hope you have uh, got home safely by the time you get this. After that run, you need a good long sleep and a few big steaks to build you up. All the best. Take care, Roger. Roger, thank you so much for your letter. I appreciate it so much. And if you would like to get uh, a letter on Mailbag, uh, feel free to send me an email to truckerray7 at gmail.com, truckerray with the number 7 at gmail.com, and just write in the email that you would like to have this read on Mailbag. Good morning. I'm just on my way to the shipper. I am um, leaving a little bit later because it took me that long to get a shower reserved this morning. <coughs> I was gonna take one last night and I thought, nah, I'll get one in the morning when it's warm. It'll feel better when I come out. And sure enough, it's a hot one again today. It's already 41 Celsius. It's gonna be a scorcher today. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know if I'm gonna be turning my truck off. I don't think my APU unit can keep up to that. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I think it finally cooled down to about 38 last night at about 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. rather. It was, it was a real scorcher. My goodness. But anyway, <clears throat> I I, lo I tried to look for this place on Google Earth, and it doesn't exist. There ain't nothing there but a bunch of farmland or desert <laughs> so I'm assuming this is a new building that I'm going to so uh, we'll see when we get there hopefully there is some place there and someone didn't get the address mixed up because when you look on the satellite view and there's nothing but farm there's not even a building kind of makes you concerned <laughs> we'll see soon enough though we will we just have, we're about 19 miles away from it, so hopefully we're not going into the middle of nowhere. Well, I think this has got to be the place up here, right here on the left here. And maybe they're picking it right out of the fields and picking up the little baby watermelons. And this has got to be it right here. Right in the middle of nowhere. And there's a lot of trucks parked here. I got a feeling uh, it's going to be an all day thing. Thing. <laughs> Stuck in the middle of the desert. Okay, we're all checked in. And it is going to be a wait. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm number 10. 7, 8, 9, 10. Wow. Yeah. I got nine trucks ahead of me here. So this is going to be a wait. <laughs> I knew this was going to be an all day thing. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get very far today. But uh, it's okay. You know, this is the way it is when you come to these farms. Uh, we are literally on a farm. I'm looking over here and you can see the little watermelons. Uh, in the fields over here, so they pick them right here They box them right here and they ship them right here. So it's not that these are coming in uh, From Mexico, they're literally picking them in the field right out in the back <laughs> So yeah Anyway, it's okay We got air conditioning we got food we got water we got everything we need so I'm happy We'll just wait it out until we get called It 
is a hot one out there. 48 Celsius. That's way over 100. <laughs> Amazingly hot out here. I don't think I've ever had, I don't think I've ever experienced heat like this. Man, I'm sure glad my air conditioner works. <laughs> oh boy, can you imagine? Oh boy. Now, these guys here, I can't believe how fast they loaded me here. Just amazing. I got in the door and I was loaded in no time. I thought it was going to be here for hours. What are these guys called? Ah. Uh, anyway, it's Eagle Produce. I don't know what the name is on the building. There's always a different name on the bill of lading. <laughs> Oh my, why does it want me to go that way? I'm not gonna go that way. Please go the long way, please. Go the long way. Let me see here, if I go this way, 939 it says. So 3125, how much time is that gonna take off when I decide to go the way I wanna go? Now it's calculating 3120. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next move now is to make our way to the Flying J and give this thing away. And doesn't seem too terribly heavy, so I think it would be okay, but still, always got to weigh these things. Peace of mind. You know what, I was gonna get an aerial shot of this area with the drone, but I'm telling you, man, it was so hot out there. And that drone does heat up when it's up there. And in this heat, oh man, I just did not want to risk it overheating on me. Uh, <laughs> I just, no. When I take it in, inside the truck, and I take my files off of it, the bottom of it warms up pretty good just from transferring files, so. Being up in the air, yeah, you might think, oh, the, the, the wind will keep it cool. No, it's it's like an oven out here. You ha I, I had to run the truck. I could not just use the bunk uh, air conditioner because, you know, off the APU unit, it wouldn't have done the job. I still can't believe I'm loaded already. This is incredible. These Those guys are fast. If I ever have to come here again, man, I'm gonna be the first one in line to get here. Because <laughs> there was like 10 trucks in front of me when I got here. And I think I sat, I was only there a couple hours. What is it now? One, yeah, 116. I think I got there at 11. So I only really have to sit there for a couple hours. So that's awesome. Okay. Well, looking at my gauge here, I think my weight on my drives is probably dead on to 34 or 33 something and I got full tank of fuel which you always should do before you weigh always make sure that your tanks are full that way you're getting an accurate reading Okay, well, uh, the, the scales, were the, the weight was good, 79 whatever, I'm just barely legal. I'm not quite at 80,000, so they maxed me out completely. I was 34.4 on the trailer and 33.4 on the drive, so I slid a few, I slid at three pins. I might be a hair over on my drives now, or I might be just dead on, but I'd rather have the weight on the drives because you'll get an exemption for the APU unit, so I should be good, I should be fine. I'm not overgrowth, so that's what matters. That's all that matters right now. Wow. My stomach is actually a little upset. I think I got a little bit of heat stroke. I'm gonna drink a lot of water.
thought I'd join you on a little bit of drive down this uh, hill. We're in ninth gear right now. The Jake is holding us, and that's that's good. You don't want to use your brakes in this heat. Oh man, you don't. It's actually gotten a lot better. It's 40 Celsius now. <laughs> it's gotten better. It was 50 earlier, so it's dropped down. But yeah, you certainly don't want to be heating up your brakes in this heat. No way. No way. But it's going to hopefully start getting, uh, start cooling down soon. Now that we're getting uh, into a little bit later in the day. <laughs> yeah, my stomach was even feeling a little upset and everything. I think I got a tiny bit of heat stroke earlier messing around sliding the axles and that not, just not good but this is beautiful countryside isn't it really is look at the valley down there wow that is really something that is really neat to look at you don't realize how big this earth is until you drop down into a valley like that and that's just one little area it's a beautiful planet our Lord made you know his handiwork shaping the mountains and the hills and the valleys yeah it's pretty amazing I love driving the US. Oh man, if that rock ever fell down, that would be damaging. Just look at this. Beautiful. This is, you don't see this in Canada. Canada, you see a lot of beautiful landscape, yes. But you don't see stuff like this. This is why I do what I do out here. To bring this to you. Yeah, such beautiful countryside. <laughs> and you know what? We're gonna be in for a real surprise tomorrow because uh, I'm gonna be stopping in Page tonight. There's a place in Page. Uh, it's not a actual pilot, but it's a licensed pilot. So they have, you can get fuel there, and whatever. Uh, but it's a truck stop and that's where I'm gonna be stopping. Whoa, what a view. <laughs> I wish I could show you guys this. Maybe we'll see it on the other side here, this hill here. Just bear with me here. But uh, from Page to Salt Lake City, there's some really amazing uh, landscape through there. You guys are really gonna get. Uh, you're gonna re be really be amazed if you have never seen it before. I mean, this this here. It's incredible. All this red rock. I don't know what our elevation is here. It's 5,500 feet. Sure feels a lot higher than this.
Hi there everyone, I am Ray Gaucher and welcome to this edition of Bible Break. This is going to be a bit of a sobering uh, Bible Break. Uh, the title of it, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. And right in the title, it kind of tells you what we're going to be reading. This psalm is very, very, very to the point. Where And the reason why I wanted to do this one, my friend Sean and me, we were reading through this. And, and actually, we had a discussion earlier in the week. And we're both feeling very defeated on what's going on in the world and how evil is just taking over in the governments, in the schools. It's just phenomenal. And I sent him this psalm earlier in the week because I wanted to show him, even though this stuff is all happening, God is going to have the final saying. God is going to have the final word. Even though those that are doing these evil plots to corrupt our children and everything, God is still going to have the final saying. Even though they think they're going to get away with it, they will not. Psalm 94, we're going to be reading here. Psalm 94. I'm just going to read through it. And if the Lord, if I feel the Lord put something on my heart to say as we go through it, but it's very, very, very to the point. Very, very self-explanatory. You will not have an issue understanding this. Just like the last one I read. So if you're ready, we're reading out of the King James Version from the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. <clears throat> and if you have that um, edition, it's page 672, Psalm 94. Let's begin. Verse 1. O Lord God. To whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? If you're feeling defeated because of what you're seeing going on around us. Just the evil that's taking over. I hope this is a comfort to you. I hope this is. Verse 4. How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? Ah, we're getting away with this. We're doing all of this. This is wonderful. And nobody can stop us. Wrong. God will have a final say. Verse 5. They break, in, they break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They're breaking people in pieces by the things that they're doing. And they are doing away with your wonderful heritage, Lord, that you have given us. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Verse 7. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. They're saying, we're going to continue to do what we want because the Lord doesn't see it. He's not paying attention. He doesn't care. He doesn't regard it. That's a big wrong. The Lord is fully aware of what's going on. Fully aware of it. Why does he continue to allow it? Because he will receive glory through those that come to repentance. The Lord never allows anything to happen unless there's going to be glory gained on his behalf. Verse 8, Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, you fools out there, when will you be wise? When will you wake up? Verse 9, He that planted the ear Shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chaseth us, the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he know? Verse 11, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. He knows everyone's thoughts. He knows every single hair on your head. You will not get away with anything. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteth, O Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law. 
that thou mayest give him rest from the day of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Did you hear that? For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But the judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers, or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held it up. And the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. This one really hits home to me right now. Verse 19, In the multitude of my thoughts within me, all these things we're thinking of, all this burden that's on our heart, all the burdens that are on our minds of what we see going on around us. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, your comforts, O Lord, thy comforts delight my soul. And where do we get comfort? Right here in the Word of God. Verse 20, Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Verse 21, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous, condemning those men of God, women of God. We're going to see this happening the more and more we get closer to the last day. Martyrs throwing people in jail for having churches open and condemn the innocent blood. The innocent blood, I think of all those millions of children that have been aborted. Verse 22, but the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. Ah, oh, there's some comfort there and some power right there. But the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. Final verse 23. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. That's right. As I keep saying, they're not going to get away with this. The Lord will put a stop to it. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. Wow. The reason why I wanted to read this, for anybody else out there that has a heavy heart on what's going on around us, the Lord is in control. He's in control, and these people, these evildoers, will not get away with this. They may look like they're getting away with it now, but they will not. We need to pray for these people. We need to pray for these governments, that they will have a change of heart, that they will repent of what they're doing, because the eternity that they will be spending will be in the lake of fire. And no one should ever want that or wish that on anybody. My dear friends, this has been powerful for me. I hope it has been for you too. Until next time, God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. Bye for now. Yes, we're still over here at Marble Canyon, over at Eagle's Landing, and uh, had a good rest last night. It's still really warm this morning. Wow, they're expecting another scorcher today, they said. And um, I'm just kind of glad I'm heading north. <laughs> but we're heading into some really beautiful countryside. Just here to take my lock off. I always put that on at night. I don't leave it on when I travel because when I do, the 
dirt and the grime will get inside the lock from the road in case it's raining or whatever. So I only put it on at nighttime. Another reason why I only do that is because if you leave, the, if you leave your lock on your trailer, you can accidentally leave it on the trailer when you drop it in the yard or wherever you're taking it if you're dropping it. And I've done it before. And you end up losing a $40 lock because someone has to cut the lock off because you forgot to take it off the trailer. And that's happened to me before. So word of advice to the newbies, the rookies, don't make the rookie mistake that I did way back when. Forget to take your lock off the trailer. Yeah, the best time to put it on is at night because obviously you're not driving, you're not moving. It's easy for someone to steal your product when you're sleeping. It even happens in truck stops. I've seen that happen before. All right. We are on our way. Very much looking forward to this run this morning because of all this beautiful scenery ahead of us last night. I didn't want to drive too long with the sun down because I just didn't want to miss the scenery. Didn't want to miss it. And as you can see in front of you, just look at this. This incredible. That's gorgeous. But I guess if you see this every day, it's not a big deal. There's people that live over here. They probably see this every day. Look at all the tracks here from everyone with their four wheelers and their Jeeps and their dune, bungy, dune, dune buggies driving around in the desert here. That must be so much fun. You can really be a kid out here, can't you? <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. How are ya? Just setting up my printer. For those of you that don't know, this is an Epson uh, WF110 work or workforce WF110. It's a wireless uh, Wi-Fi Bluetooth printer. Very small, compact printer. It pretty well can put it anywhere in your uh, in your truck. It stores quite nicely. It does a really nice job too. And there it is right there. Before I had to go to a store or a service station or a Flying J to get this printed out, this printer only cost me about, oh gee, was under a hundred bucks. Maybe not even, maybe 60 bucks. And it's worked beautifully since I've had it. I've had this thing for almost, almost two years now. And it has not failed me once. So just power it down. Close it up. And it goes up into this little spot up here. And that's it. Well, today's a lot more pleasant to drive in. 17 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I'd say that's a lot better. Um, I've had a few people ask me, I get these questions all the time. Where'd you get the jersey, Ray? Are you from Ireland? No, a buddy of mine out, nah, out in the UK. He's from Ireland. Uh, his name is Niall, my friend Niall out there. He sent me this and one other one. I haven't worn the other one, Niall, because it's just a little bit on the warm side to be wearing that one. I'll be wearing it once it cools down. Yeah, I still have that with me. The other uh, hoodie that you sent me, like the other jersey or whatever it was. I know you sent me two. So I'll be wearing that one when it gets a little cooler. But yeah, this is where I get got this from. I'm, I, my dad, I have, my dad has some Irish on his side. So there is some Irish on our family side. But uh, no, I, I'm not from Ireland. But uh, honored to wear it for sure. So we have about six hours, I think. Maybe not even. I think about six hours to the border. But we're going to enjoy this beautiful weather here. I think it's gonna be sunny the whole way. I think we're gonna have sunshine the whole week. And uh, it sure is nice to see it. As long as you got air conditioning in your truck, it's a good day.
my friends, we are about 22 miles away from Shelby. Uh, Got to top our fuel up before we cross the border. And um, yeah, make our way maybe to Medicine Hat tonight and then do our delivery. Uh, yeah, and then get into Regina the next day. Do our delivery Monday. Still actually recovering from that East Coast trip. Still having a hard time sleeping. It takes a lot out of you, it really does. Well friends, I really hope you've enjoyed this. I'm gonna end things here. Uh, or should I say I'm going to conclude this particular uh, production because all I'm going to do is cross the border, make my way into Regina, and just deliver it. There's not a whole lot to see there. But you know what? I really hope you've enjoyed this trip, going through Arizona and Utah and all those beautiful sights. I really wish I, I could have got some drone shots, but there were a couple occasions where it was just too hot. It was just too hot to put a drone in the air, and I didn't want to risk it overheating falling out of the sky or something but I think the main camera captured some pretty amazing sights and I just want to thank you all for joining me if you have a comment please leave it on the bottom of this video and if you would like to send me an email send it to truckerray7 at gmail.com truckerray7 at gmail.com if you'd like me to read it on mailbag let me know that in the email, then that way I don't have to bug you later and say, can I read this? Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, do subscribe and click the notification bell and you will receive notifications every time a new video comes in. Good to have you all. I uh, love you guys all. And until next time, God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. Bye for now.